So uh, I'm, as Brian said, going to talk about uh, gaming. I uh, hope everyone had a good lunch. We're going to do 20 minutes of Objective C. Uh, I'm, I'm totally joking, OK? Uh, so let me give you a quick introduction into a uh, company that I'm working for, Wizcorp. Um, we make games, uh, some around 4 million plus downloads. Um, <coughs> we love uh, big, big contributors to our open source. Uh, our, go check out our GitHub account slash WizCorp anytime. Um, and we use PhoneGap, so I'm here to talk about that and uh, basically how it integrates into our games. Um, and we were also actually, I've written here, we're actually the first uh, published PhoneGap game uh, way back. Uh, so let me just give you a background into the full scope of um, the tech that we have in our game. It's a little bit salesy, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so we have a game engine that's built in Node.js. It's called Mage. It stands for Magical Async Game Engine. We have uh, a system architecture in the server called Moria, which is basically an uh, automatic scalable architecture. So as we get a ton more users, um, the servers come up automatically, and you know magic stuff happens in the land of Moria. We have uh, something called Gamepad. This is a GitHub-based deployment tool. Uh, this handles uh, when we want to push something to uh, production, we can just use uh, basically git commands and it's all automated, it's very cool. Um, and then we have a front end stack, so this is animation, uh, libraries, UI libraries, and of course, uh, phone gap. So, this is basically, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so on the left we have this, uh, the device, and on the right we have the cloud stuff. Um, essentially we have a bunch, like, I'll, I'll start with the cloud stuff uh, and then phone gap. We have a bunch of web nodes, that's where Mage is going to be. Uh, that basically scales exponentially depending on how much uh, uh, load you have. Uh, we have a master node, so this takes commands from gamepad and kick out updates across all the uh, web nodes. And we have a load balancer, which is going to take, uh, it's going to spread the load across, across the web nodes as people access from their devices. Um, I haven't written anything on the storage here because this could absolutely be anything you like. Uh, Mage is completely storage agnostic. It, it's just plug and play. You want to use Couch, you want to use SQL, that's fine. Um, on the device here, you'll see we, we, we're using PhoneGap and, and plugins here to gain access to. Uh, different areas of storage on the device, um, different properties of the device, like uh, we want to use Game Center, for example, so we, uh, we make quite a few plugins to do those kind of things. Um, so you can see, like, PhoneGap is a fairly, it's small, but it's a fairly major part of the uh, ecosystem. So I'm going to talk about f uh, PhoneGap as a framework now. Um, Basically, we use PhoneGap. We, I mean, we could have written some custom stuff, uh, but to be honest, PhoneGap has an incredibly stable API, um, a great layer between web and native. Uh, so we were, why reinvent the wheel? I mean, the uh, Adobe team and the other teams that work on the project are going to upgrade and maintain this for us, so that's great. There's a great API for writing plugins. Um, and of course, PhoneGap, provides events, so you get on pause, on resume, and all this kind of cool stuff. And it's cross-platform, um, so that's awesome. So for us, really, taking advantage of PhoneGap, um, we need to access a lot of uh, device features like Game Center or on Android if it's uh, Play Services. So we rely heavily on the, the plugin architecture. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about basically the plugins that we use to enhance the HTML5 gaming ex uh, experience. So I'm going to start with an easy one. Uh, this is called Wiz Spinner. This is one of our oldest plugins, and it, it solves a couple of problems that we uh, anticipated quite early on. Um, it's, ba it's basically a completely native spinner. I don't know if you can see too well the graphic there. This has no effect. Um, it's a non-blocking JavaScript spinner, so if you were to use a, like a giant div across your application um, and this loaded a GIF 
And then after you called show and you did some very uh, complex JavaScript that was going to really you know, use up the CPU or something, you're going to find that your GIF doesn't actually spin. It just stops. Um, so we also like, uh, like I mentioned, if you know, if you have a big div uh, and this is full screen on a tablet, you're going to see like a paint effect, especially if you're using like an opacity kind of background layer. <coughs> background layer. Um, and users using a native spinner means that users cannot touch your web view. They cannot touch any part of your app at all. Um, so that's real nice. And uh, it uses a real op um, OS component. So for Android, I think it's like uh, alert. Uh, no, it's dialog something dialog spinner dialog or something. Um, and on uh, iOS, it's uh, UI activity component blah image blah something stupid name. Um, so <laughs> so that's the Wiz spinner. Uh, this is PhoneGap three compatible now. Uh, so you can get it on Plugman actually. It's kind of cool. Um, I will show you this in a live demo, uh, which is going to be fun in a bit. Next one I want to talk about is uh, the view manager. So we realized that um, actually we were going to have some problems preloading things in what, just with one web view. So we decided that one view wasn't enough. Um, and uh, <coughs> so we, we created this view manager that can control views, you know, set layouts. Uh, we can show and hide stuff whenever we want. And there's also a messaging system. So if we, if we create another web view off the screen of the device, we can preload an animation library inside there and then message it and say, OK, get ready to uh, show that animation and then bring it on screen. I'll also give you a, a demonstration of this in a second. Um, this is a game we did for Capcom um, quite a while ago. Uh, it's not actually playable on the App Store right now, uh, but I'm going to demo it for you here. So I'm going to need some sound from the laptop, please. Can, can we do that? Awesome. Okay. Let's get rid of this. So I'm using this really cool uh, app called Reflector, which allows me to show you guys exactly what's going on on the screen. This is the main screen of the game. <coughs> um, I'm sick, by the way. Sorry for the coffee. <laughs> Don't laugh. Uh, so here you can see the main view is um, a web view. There's a header and there's a footer as well. Um, actually, these all three components here, the, the header, the main view, and the footer are all web views. Uh, I can prove that to you with Safari's debug tool. You can see here, these are all web views. Um, so our index is where PhoneGap is housed. Um, you'll see there's two views here, and then you can't see this one. This one is actually uh, off screen right now. This is our uh, pop up guy. Um, so, let me just give you an example of what we can do with um, the view manager here. So, I'm going to tell, I don't know if you saw what I did there, it's at it's, uh, it's the bottom. I'm using view manager hide game footer. And uh, you'll see our footer is now just disappeared off uh, the screen. We can also, let's, let's, let's get rid of the header as well. I don't need that. Um, and now we're going to change the layout of the main screen here, this main UI web view. Uh, I'm going to basically set it to be top aligned by 50 pixels. Um, and that's done that. It's actually it's really funky, like this app here, because of the screen res, it's totally not <laughs> in scale, but trust me, that's 50 pixels from the top. I'll make it 150. There we go. So this is great. If, you wanna, if you're on an Android device and you have no clue how 
the height of your device, you can actually just say bottom 10 pixels and the view will jump down to the bottom of the screen with a 10 pixel buffer. So this is really, uh, really useful for um, when we create uh, like menus at the bottom of the screen on Android, for example. So. I'll just move this back up to the top. Let's give it, um, let's give it a height of, uh, this also take integer, um, and it'll also take uh, percent as well. So if I can, you know, I can give it 50% width, um, and it'll go over there. <laughs> right. Moving on. I'm going to talk now about uh, Canvas. Um, there's a really cool framework called Ejector. Some of you might have heard about it. Um, Ejector basically allows you to create uh, a Canvas view, but without using the web view. Um, it uses, uh, I don't, like, I don't want to make it too technical, but there's, there's something, like there's a framework in iOS called the JavaScript core, and this basically processes uh, JavaScript. And uh, what Ejector does is they take, uh, they, they put in a custom JavaScript uh, core framework and then basically execute Canvas natively on that. So if you, because you don't need a web view, there's no DOM, uh, there's no web workers, there's absolutely nothing. Like it's just a Canvas processing machine. Uh, so you get extremely fast FPS. Um, it is also al allows you to create a, a WebGL. Um, and of course, uh, what we did was we then took that framework and bridged it with PhoneGap. So this allows you to have uh, an, your regular UI web view uh, and to send commands to uh, the Canvas view. It's actually a UI view. Um, so this is really cool. I mean, like WebGL in iOS, that's awesome. Like, you can do it. You can totally do it now. Um, so this is built into a plugin called Wiz Canvas, which is at the top of the screen there. Um, and I'm going to show you a demo which uh, uses Ejector, uh, also with PhoneGap. So you're not going to be able to see how incredibly fast this is in the device. Um, because, uh, yeah, I don't want to buy that. <laughs> you can buy it, I mean. Right, so uh, this is a very simple game. This has sound, yeah. Can I have some sound, please? Hello. So this is a very simple game. It, you know, this is like a puzzle thing. Um, that's enough of that. Let's go check out what's going on here. So you can see there is an index page. Um, let's get in there. Uh, I'm basically going to grab... I'm going to grab the, the, uh, the canvas and move it across to the right by 100 pixels, and you'll see now that there is a web view behind it. Um, oh, I didn't demo the spinner. I could do that now. Let me, let's, let's do that. Um, so the, the Wiz spinner plugin that I showed you before um, does this. Which is very cool, like a cup, you know, one liner basically to show that, and I can just hide this as well. Uh, yeah, with spinner, what? Let's do that again. Show. Hide. So that's, I mean, it's, it's incredibly easy to use these kind of, uh, oh, my time's up, to use these uh, plugins. And it really creates, like, much more of a native feel, if you like. Um, the canvas especially is incredibly fast uh, to, to um, process. And it's, like, si si consistent 60 FPS. It's, it's, uh, it's absolutely incredible. If anyone wants to actually see it, like, running on the phone, um, 
do come see me uh, after. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, I have no idea what my timing is like, but am I okay? So uh, yeah, check out Tiki Taku. It's on the iOS uh, App Store. Uh, this is our WizCorp GitHub account. Some links to Ejector, and uh, I'll make these slides available at some point soon. Um, all right, thanks very much.